Welcome to the Exploring New England podcast with Ryan Zip, where each week I will be talking about what makes this historic region such an amazing place to enjoy. From the scenic views to road trip ideas to where to grab the best eats and much more. Let's get going. Hello and welcome to episode 29 of the Exploring New England podcast with me, Ryan Zip. Um, here we are fully into fall now. Um, you know, last week I talked about my final summer vibe trip as, uh, got the last day in up at the beach areas in Southern coastal Maine, uh, and ended that on the first day of autumn officially with the equinox. Um, and then, uh, after that, it was kind of full-on preparing uh, to start the most magical and exciting season here in New England, and that's uh, fall, autumn, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'll be the first to admit I'm a little tired this week, um, so we'll see uh, how long I get through here with today's episode. But, um, you know, it was the first uh, trip this past weekend up north uh, chasing some of the early foliage, and uh, I haven't done one of those trips in a while where it's just nonstop for the whole time I'm there driving. So like usual, I'll do a little recap and just talk about the trip uh, that seems to, you know, have been going well and, and suiting this whole kind of format of uh, the podcast. And, you know, it's kind of wild to say, to start off and say 29, episode number 29. Like, honestly, I never thought I'd even get this going. And when I did, I didn't know if it would make three, four, five episodes and then 10 and who knows. And here we are. So, um, never had a plan for kind of, uh, how long this would go and, you know, uh, going to keep it up through fall, I would say, you know, cause a lot going on. And then, uh, you know, after that, I'm not sure yet. I'll definitely be, um, you know, talking about it more and, uh, you know, could just be a end of season one type thing whenever that is and you know start it up again as we get into uh winter time you know there's uh less going on also at my store that's my main you know business five days a week um as we lead into later into november and then december is like the craziest time for us just with the holiday season and shopping so that takes a lot out of me and uh i'm still squeezing in my photo trips to kind of capture the holiday vibes at different unique, um, you know, locations, how different towns and regions celebrate throughout New England. So, uh, between running the store, going crazy, trying to do that, you know, just thinking about doing the podcast on top of it, it's it's more work than, you know, than you think. And, um, but I've really enjoyed it. So, um, so I'm definitely going to be with you through fall, I'd say, and then, then we'll see, but, um, doesn't mean there might not be other like things going on now that I have the format down and the setup here in my office, you know, um, I'm sure I'll be doing more things as well. And it's just been fun to, you know, try something new out of my comfort zone and kind of, uh, you know, see how far I can take it. And it's been great. And had so many people, uh, you know, message me, email me how much they enjoy every week, whether it's listening on their way into work, way home from work, the gym, um, just when they're home relaxing and, you know, have notes down for, you know, spots I talk about, whether they're locations to check out, um, coffee shops, food, etc. So it's been really fun. And I appreciate everyone that tunes in every week to me. And uh, it's a very humbling experience. So thank you all for the support so far. And, you know, 28 and now the 29th episode in. So um, back to, uh, you know, regularly scheduled programming after my little, uh, you know, rant there I guess you could say but uh yeah I've just felt kind of close with all you guys this has kind of uh allowed me to open up more about what's going on with me and just just kind of you know not just the photos every week but what goes on behind them and a little bit more about the photographer artist that is me um so yeah so this past weekend uh you know early stuff you know about a month ago it was looking like all right it's looking like it's going to be a solid average fall then week or two later, um, there was starting to see earlier than average color up north in spots. And then, you know, it was kind of this, um, you know, we were trying to, trying to figure out what was going to happen. And it was thought at first, maybe it would be like 
2020 where a lot of color in many spots peaked early. But then with uh, a warm stretch of temps everywhere in New England and then, you know, having not gotten rain in a month in a lot of spots, um, that early color kind of stalled out. And um, we saw a lot of green still, even with this early color. So some of those that went really early kind of didn't last and had some, you know, either browned out or dropped. Um, but that, you know, that stuff always happens. And um, as of now... You know, going by what um, people have been talking about, like my buddy Jim Salji, who does the um, foliage forecasts and updates for Yankee Magazine. Uh, my buddy Jack from uh, Boston, who I shoot a lot with and met up with. Um, you know, he's been kind of um, going up to different spots and uh, also been putting out updates. Uh, Jack Daryl Photography is his handle. A lot of you probably follow him already. Um, and definitely follow Jim as well, Jim Salji Photo on Instagram as well. Um, but, um, you know, so it seems like the, the trends for times when you're going to have color or near peak foliage or more to usual to average, as far as what the color is going to be, um, there's definitely color developing and early color. Some areas might get nice and bright, like, you know, optimal other areas might, you know, be more of a muted mustery maroon you know, but still colorful. Um, it's just hard to tell yet what places, uh, you know, are going to end up. Um, a lot goes into that. And Jim would be someone from the scientific nature. If you read some of his updates, explains it in a much uh, better way. I'm just kind of going by what I've seen since 2017 when I've been doing this and just, you know, checking in on updates and photos from uh, people who are posting all over New England. So, um, so, you know, after thought that it could be really early, Definitely made plans for the last weekend in September to get up north just in case it was going to be like 2020. Um, and then turned out to be, you know, kind of more average. So uh, I've been up in northern spots in this, up in the Great North Woods a few years ago for some of that early color up in that tip of New Hampshire. Um, I've done earlier, very beginning of first few days of October in like Baxter um, State Park that's up in Millinocket, like up a bit into inland Maine. Um, you know, and I've done like the Northeast Kingdom in Vermont as well for the very end of September. And last year, unfortunately, it was a off year all around. It was some of the worst foliage and color since I've been doing this. So, but that stuff happens and you kind of always have to roll with it and uh, just make the best of it and just, just enjoy the trips, you know. Um, so uh, I went up Saturday, which was September 28th, um, closed up my store at four, had the car packed, so immediately got right up on uh, 91 and you know the good part is that uh basically for where I was going to stay up in um you know the northeast part of the state was like right off 91 so it was literally the same road the whole trip so it was you know close to 4 hours ish maybe a little bit a little less um but just on you know 91 the whole time so it was an easy drive really not any traffic and once you get over the border into Vermont um, you're typically good unless they have some kind of road work going on. Um, stayed in just kind of a basic roadside hotel, uh, in Lindenville, just North of St. Johnsbury. Um, basically it was just, you know, this time of year, unfortunately, a lot of your basic run of the mill motels will be crazy expensive, you know, more than you could get a spot, you know, on the shore somewhere right now with an ocean view, just because it is foliage season and they know they can get it. So. Um, especially for weekend nights, you're going to pay a premium and, you know, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't cheap for what it was, um, colonnade in or something it was fine, clean enough, but you know, definitely not worth what you have to pay for at this time of year. Um, so I got up there, uh, I think it was a little before eight o'clock, eight ish, grab some food from like a nearby spot, get nothing special just to kind of fill me up. But, um, you know, the plan would be to, you know, start shooting the next morning and, my buddy Jack uh, had been up there for a few days, so he'd been driving around and kind of seeing where the, the early color was happening, where it wasn't. And, um, you know, we talked about meeting up at a spot in Burke, uh, a great town there, you know, in the Northeast Kingdom, they call it that part of Vermont. Uh, the next morning, uh, you know, a little after sunrise, there was uh, reports for, uh, looked like it was going to be foggy again, so weren't sure how much we'd be able to see in the morning anyway. But it was a little after seven, I met up with him on a back road there in Burke. Um, and great to, you know, catch up a bit. 
He's become one of my closer uh, photographer buddies here in New England, and he's based out of Boston. So um, whenever we cross paths, we love to you know hang, grab a bite, obviously shoot together. And uh, anytime I'm in Boston, you know I try to try to meet up for a little bit too in between his his work schedule and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so it was uh, great just to be out there and you know standing on a on a dirt road, you know back road, and uh, just checking out you know these beautiful scenes mountains and these colors and one thing that that we both noticed and you know seems to be a trend is the the reds this year um look a lot better last year they they weren't um you know wasn't the foliage overall wasn't very good but the reds were were kind of even even worse than usual last year but this year they look great um as far as how long some will last i know with the drought some of the color you know may peak nice but not last long because of that and again, refer to, to Jim explains it much more scientific and eloquent than me. Um, but it was nice to see some of those colors. And there were spots with some pretty, you know, I wouldn't say it was peak anywhere. But, um, you know, just uh, it was feeling like fall. Um, the temperatures were nice both days I was up there. I think it, you know, got to the low 70s and, you know, sunny and everything. Um, but, uh, you know, so it was good to shoot for a little bit with, uh, with him. Went to a few different spots that uh, we had been before last year when we met up there. And uh, then went to a spot he had found there uh, called Auntie Dee Dee's uh, in Burke. It's like a bakery, uh, coffee shop. They do other stuff, sandwiches, but really cool little down-to-earth spot there. And stopped in. They had already sold out of like their breakfast kind of sandwich thing. So I got like a chocolate croissant. But uh, they did a nice uh, you know, uh, iced latte there. and. You know, could definitely recommend it as as a spot. They had like a fridge with like local cheeses and meats and other stuff. Uh, people were really nice. So that's the other part I always enjoy about this is you know going through a lot of these small towns and from these general stores and delis and bakeries and coffee shops and you know obviously supporting them. Owning a small business myself, I I know how important it is. So I always like to uh, support as many of these when I'm on the road as possible and also enjoy the uh food and beverages they provide so um he had been there like three nights i think and had to work the next day get back so uh he took off kind of late morning and then uh and then it was uh go time to just uh drive around and enjoy and you know in in past trips on my fall trips uh especially some of the early ones it was kind of like a i had a real like laundry list of um spots and it was very like go to this one then go to that one go to that one and um and i enjoyed it and i still do that maybe not to that extent but for some trips i really have a a list of targets but um you know some of these areas i have shot before and also just as a general theme with my trips the last year or so year and a half i've been trying to um enjoy them more you know for what they are and everything and not just make it about um, you know, getting X amount of keeper shots or getting this perfect here because there's always things out of your control like the lighting, um, you know, sunset, sunrises, clouds, moon. Like there's so much that goes into it that you can't control. So um, you'll just get frustrated and, you know, you don't want to look at it that way. So um, for this, you know, these coming weeks with the the fall stuff, uh, just kind of, you know, um, want to just enjoy the whole process and everything because it doesn't last long you know it's only maybe the la- end of uh september to what first like second week in november ish you have while there's still any colorful foliage as you kind of start north and make your way down and you know i'm only getting two days uh a week to kind of shoot it and i'm running like a madman already so it doesn't last long so really just trying to you know enjoy the whole season this year and for what it is so um you know, excited for you guys to follow along on Instagram. Like usual, I'm posting some of my favorite greatest hits from fall, you know, 2017 to last year. I didn't really get anything, but at least through 2022, the shots are from. And then starting to mix in uh, newer shots as well, which I did this morning. So, um, but, uh, you know, um, after, you know, he left to head back to Boston, I was in the Burke area and there's a great road there, Darling Hill Road. There's like a number of inns and um, hotels, different sizes right on that road. It's a huge spot for like mountain bikers. There's like the, let's see, Kingdom Trail. I don't know why I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but 
there's all these trails for mountain bikers and it's a big thing up there. There's all parking lots and um, through, you know, spring, summer and even fall, obviously it's a big thing. And you're just in this beautiful area up there. So you don't just have leaf peepers and those kind of tourists. You have people up there doing some, uh, you know, action sports and such. So um, that road there, there's, uh, I don't know if there's a few spots to get on the trail there, but I know that's a big thing. Um, always see the parking lots full no matter when. And uh, also if the weather's nicer, you're going to see a ton of, you know, cars, SUVs going down the road with bikes on the back of them uh, everywhere in the area. So um, headed there, but, you know, there was some color, but again, it, uh, it wasn't ready yet. And uh, actually this coming weekend, I'll be heading back and staying right at Burke, um, a place called the Village Inn, a really nice spot right there, um, right amongst some restaurants, and uh, uh, going to be staying with them a few nights, getting some content for them, and in return, they're hosting me there, so really excited for that, and uh, so a lot of this I kind of knew um, would, uh, would be back up, so spots I knew weren't ready yet, uh, I either just made a quick stop by or didn't bother with, because I knew, you know, we'd be heading back to them this coming weekend. And uh, the thought was to maybe just check out some other random spots either I'd never gotten to or that were just a little bit more north from there. Um, and I knew I wouldn't be going to next weekend just to kind of see what I would come across. And, um, you know, the uh, one plan I did have for the next day was to kind of um, home base north of Smuggler's Notch and north of Stowe there, a little bit more west. But from all the reports leading up to the end, uh, there just wasn't much color there yet. So I decided to just kind of stay a little more um, the central part and just kind of drive north to some areas with some higher elevation to see what I can find. And, um, you know, I did stop in um, through uh, town of Elmore. Um, and there's a lake there, Lake Elmore. It's just a little bit uh, east of Stowe, like that general area. So I've shot there before and gotten some cool photos. But uh, stopped in, and yeah, the color wasn't ready yet. Um, but, you know, it's always, they have like a little, uh, it's kind of like a general store there right on the lake. So if you ever need sandwiches or snacks right there in Elmore, that's a good spot. Um, you know, that's the thing too. A lot of these towns, not all of them, but some have some lakes. And I always try to check out to see if they have like a public access spot with parking or public boat launch or whatever, just to go see. You never know what kind of vantage points you can get. Also kind of scout out, like, is this going to be a good spot to come back to later for sunset or maybe the next morning for sunrise? So always good to do that. Um, and then, you know, I had seen up at J Peak, the higher elevation north near the Canadian border. They had a lot of color, like basically peak, you know, then, but you're at a higher elevation. Um, so I kind of just headed that way. Uh, went up through town of Montgomery, pretty town there. It's known for having like some of the most covered bridges. I forget how many if there's five or six in the general town or area. So um, went up through there and made it to town called Troy. Um, and that's like right, basically there's, there's a, you know, a custom station there. That's one of the entrance uh, points to Canada. So uh, I didn't have my passport on me, so I made sure I didn't happen to take a wrong turn and get into a spot I wouldn't be able to, uh, you know, turn around or anything. Um, but pulled off on a, a dirt road there in Troy and, kind of took in some views and was looking across into, you know, scenes in Canada, which is kind of a cool feeling just to be right there. And uh, I was surprised. I know obviously not everything's a higher elevation, but a lot of the area right near the border was still had a lot of green to go. So um, definitely think this coming weekend is going to be a lot more color in those northern parts. So um, and then, you know, kind of was zigzagging on this curvy back road not far from the border. It was kind of cool. Um, making my way towards like Jay, um, Jay State Forest, Jay Peak was up in the distance. Um, but the lighting was terrible at that point. It was just harsh sun. So it wasn't really worth stopping too much to take photos. I did a few times to take in the views. Um, but then, um, you know, made my way back down through the town of Lowell and then eventually to Craftsbury. And that's where I would be uh, staying for the next night. I found this great little inn uh, called the Craftsbury Farmhouse, and it's exactly what it is. It's like an old farmhouse right on uh, kind of not too busy, but not like a side road or anything uh, right there. And um, I don't know how many rooms they actually have to rent out, just a handful of them. I had this like 
little like suite they called it up the stairs on the left side and uh had like the room with the queen bed in it they had another room with like a couch i think they might have folded out you know i was just there solo and had like a little table and some chairs bathroom obviously so it was a cool spot and um wasn't bad for the price that was sunday night and i also liked it too because they actually had a uh restaurant a bistro downstairs uh that would be open like it's i don't know if it's thursday through sunday i forget the days but it would definitely be open the night there um and just there's not a, lo- a lot else around there so if you can stay at a spot that has food there even better you could just kind of relax once you're done shooting um at that point you know i didn't have any high hopes for any again there wasn't the peak color there wasn't going to be a crazy sunset so i just stopped by a few lakes um one in nearby greensboro um so kind of the sun was directly in front of me so it wasn't a great shot then once the sun got below the little kind of hillside there behind the lake um i was able to get some photos there and some pretty calm conditions so i got some reflection shots so again nothing like over the top but it was just great being there uh, experiencing it um and then it was like end of daylight there wasn't much light left but i stopped at another lake kind of a narrow skinny one called uh lake illigo i can tell you E-L-L-I-G-O. Some of these things I never know how to pronounce. So, um, but it was basically out of light, and but I saw some like kind of mustardy foliage there, and set up uh, the tripod, took that out, did some, got some shots, just to again just enjoy it. It was only like five minutes from the hotel at that point. Um, so I got back, regrouped at the hotel, and it was nice because that was Sunday night. My birthday was Monday, so I treated myself. Uh, they had this what was a special, was it? Uh, habanero bacon jam burger sweet potato fries uh they made me a spicy marg per my usual and uh then you know i was talking a little bit to the waitress let her know i was there doing photos and you know i was excited to spend my birthday there with them and um ordered a dessert this chocolate flourless cake they ended up uh you know throwing it in on the house which i appreciate you know nice little gesture and so it was great uh great you know spot to uh celebrate my birthday at and you know couldn't ask for a better more chill relaxed uh way to do it um and then i noticed you know after i got done eating it was a clear night you know the stars could see everything up there it's pretty dark and uh you know we were in kind of the new moon time and the last stretch to kind of get the milky way so we almost like saw it basically naked eye and with the phone did a quick little shot to to see and uh you know it was right there i took the camera back out and tripod just got some cool long exposures there. I didn't really edit any yet, but, um, you know, it was just always great to capture the Milky Way. I haven't been able to do it much the last few years, a few times, but between clouds and wildfire smoke and other things, it just uh, wasn't always lining up. So, um, so it was a great way to end the night and welcome in another year, you know, staying at this beautiful spot, great meal and photographing the Milky Way right where I was staying, right from the parking lot. Um, so I couldn't ask for anything else. When I was, uh, you know, kind of uh relaxing in the room that night they always do that the night before and kind of make a game plan for the next day like any spots i want to get to what's the route checking the weather and looking at the weather for the next day it didn't look bad but they had like a fog warning for the morning and it was you know foggy that that morning there so um, it didn't like there be any chance for a sunrise uh so set an alarm got up looked out and it was just crazy fog behind the inn um so just relaxed a bit again drove you know 12 hours i think basically 7 a.m to 7 p.m on sunday so was 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 kind of tired not too bad yet and uh but then you know was looking at the weather and it was showing dense fog till about 9 a.m so at that point i knew it was like you know no point to rush out so relaxed a bit kind of got ready packed all the gear up and uh made a plan checked out um i uh Headed back. I, at that point, I headed north a little bit to the Craftsbury Common. It's like a little small village area in the town of Craftsbury. Um, there's like a kind of like a town green, but they have like a f- like sports stuff set up on it. There's a church there. There's like a little private academy, a small college. I forget the names, but um, you know, nice little area. They have like I think they have a weekend like market, um, uh, farmers market, other things there. So one of those very small town Vermont things, which again makes it so so nice and uh got a few shots there with trying to frame in some colorful foliage there around the green with the cool church but fog was still pretty thick um 
you know, about 10 a.m. the fog burned off, and then it was just no clouds, no anything. So from then on, it was just some some harsh sunny conditions. So a nice day, but not great for uh, photography. So uh, stopped by one of the lakes again there, relaxed. I uh, typed up uh, an Instagram post. Um, as I'm there, here's pecking behind me, and there was a nice large pileated woodpecker on the tree right behind me. So it was cool. Get to see those guys, especially like 12 feet away. Um, then uh, from there, made it down town of Hardwick, a little downtown area. They have a coffee shop there. Um, Front Seat Coffee is the name of that one. Um, I had a ham and cheese croissant. I guess it was a croissant weekend. And a maple latte. I switched it up from the usual mocha. Went in Vermont, right? Went in Rome, I guess, as they say. Um, and then, you know, from there, relaxed a bit inside. It's a cool spot if you have need to like do any work, bring a laptop. It's one of those. Um, and, uh, you know, I knew that photos would be tough. Again, the color wasn't there yet and harsh sun, no clouds. So uh, I decided to hit up an orchard in Cabot as I made my way down called Burt's Orchard. And uh, one of those family spots, been there forever. They have pick, you know, pick your own apples, corn maize, sell all sorts of apple everything, maple syrup. Um, and then they have cider, hot cider. They have Cider slushy, which I grabbed one of those because it was kind of warm and sunny. Uh, I got one apple cider donut to have. So I feel like I did like the basic fall thing that everyone likes doing. But again, you know, went in Rome and it was nice just to relax a bit because I, again, been doing a lot of driving in a short period of time. So, um, you know, and there was some color there. I was in Cabot, so I swung by the A.M. Foster Covered Bridge, which, uh, you know, beautiful scene there. The covered bridge kind of the right mountains in the background and the light there again it wasn't good but you could tell on the hillside in the distance there color was coming on pretty good um so one of those areas that probably this week will have some peak color hopefully um you know after that uh kind of you know jack had gone home through from boston to boston from there and told me some of the best color he saw was going through franconia down, you know, through the, the notch area there. Um, and I'd seen that Jim had spoken about it as well. So I figured it'd be worth to kind of, uh, finish the day there. Um, hadn't planned originally to head into the white mountains, but why not? So, uh, you know, swung through Sugar Hill, beautiful little town there, normally known for like the Lupin and all that during, uh, June, but, um, it was great to go through some of those roads there that have become familiar to me and, you know, see some start of foliage, got out, snapped a few shots. Um, picked up a sandwich, the Franconia market there. And then the plan, it was like a really late lunch, I guess you could say three 30 ish head over down to, uh, Echo Lake beach in Franconia there. Um, beautiful spot. You know, you have, um, I think it's Lafayette and Cannon mountain in view. And, um, you know, uh, that was like the best light and clouds of the day. Some nice white puffy clouds came in with blue sky. And it was just this nice afternoon light. Um, so it was like, of course, I'm like, like all day I waited for some conditions. And here it is at the very end when I have to be kind of heading back soon. Um, but, you know, I, I uh, you know, you, you, you only can take the conditions they give you. So I more than uh, happily took advantage of them and took a lot of shots and posted those this morning on Instagram. So go check that out if you happen to miss it. Um, but not quite peak there, but. Some of the best color I saw anywhere the whole weekend. So that was that western side of the White Mountains, you know, in that higher elevation. So that's something that's looking like it should peak this coming weekend, this coming week. So definitely get there if it's a spot. You know, that's where the Artist Bluff Trail, everyone goes up high and gets the view there with the lake down below, which I've done before. This, I was down right on the beach by the lake. So, um, you know, check out on YouTube. I'll probably have some photos up. And uh, yeah, so. Definitely a great spot to uh, end the weekend. But once I uh, got to, you know, about four, well, after four o'clock, I knew it was going to be about four and a half hour ride-ish home. So you know, I didn't want to get home crazy late again, just been doing so much driving. So it was like, I was torn because it just looked so nice there and the light was good to like stay, but, you know, could only shoot so much of that one scene and was happy with what I was uh, able to kind of uh go home with so um closed it out there uh made it home about nine o'clock and at that point you know between driving close to four hours on saturday night then uh you know 12 hours pretty solid on sunday and then you know 
geez, I don't know, probably this about the same <laughs> on Monday. So that's why I'm a little tired. Got but right back to you know running my shop and the usual. Um, so it was a lot, and you know I don't do that quite. So I mean on all my trips I do drive a decent amount, but this is a uh, you know just pretty nonstop driving all sorts of roads. So, um, so yes, yeah, so overall a great start to fall. Great way to celebrate my birthday and. You know, and now we're now we're off. So uh, this coming weekend, like I said earlier, I'll be heading back up to the Northeast Kingdom there in the northeast part of Vermont. We'll be staying in Burke. So next week, we'll obviously share that trip and uh, what I was able to come across, how everything worked out. So I'd say, you know, most people already have plans, but if you're happen looking for where, like the um, you know Franconia area there, that western side of the White Mountains, probably be close to peak or peak. Um, you know, up in the Northeast Kingdom should be close to peak. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, the Great North Woods, Colebrook area of New Hampshire, done that before. That should be closing in on peak, I would assume. A lot of the inland stuff higher up in Maine, like Rangeley, Moosehead Lake, never got into those. Um, Baxter State Park, I did uh, in 2019 in early October in Millinocket. I would think at this point that's going to be approaching peak. So any of those like upper north higher elevations, um, you know, some other spots, higher elevation, Killington, and you're going to have pockets, you know, again, at the elevation where you're going to have some color being peak or close to peak. Um, then as you get like Stowe's like a tough one, Stowe Smuggler's Notch. I don't know if that'll be quite peak yet. It'll probably be close in spots. That one, I feel like peaks are will kind of in between this weekend and then the holiday weekend. So as far as, uh, you know, and, and that's just going to be Stowe area, smug, that just gets so crazy during October. So. Um, I don't know if I'm going to dare try to go over there or not. It was like even a day before I got up there, end of last week, and there was already a, a tourist bus was like stuck on Smuggler's Notch, which if you've never been, it's like this tight, windy road that's like sketchy enough in a car. So for an entire bus to get stuck and cars backed up is just a total nightmare. So if you do go in Smuggler's Notch, it's beautiful, but I recommend like weekday and like early, early in the morning, like get out there early before the tourists have like gotten up and gotten breakfast. So that's my only advice there. But that area is still, you know, might not be quite peak this weekend, but they'll probably be good color. It'll probably peak somewhere in between that. So and who knows? Cause we still don't know exactly what this year is going to bring once everything goes in. Um, and then kind of the white mountains in general, besides kind of that Franconia area, typically peaks around the holiday weekend. Um, I know Conway is kind of, from a report I saw, it was kind of the most amount of green right now. But I know the holiday weekend is typically for, for the White Mountains and um, like middle of October. And unfortunately, it's also going to be a time of just tons of people. And you have, you know, the Kank and you have um, 302. So you don't have a lot of roads. And then people are just pulled over everywhere. People are hiking. So it's beautiful there. But again, any popular spots or overlooks or hikes, trailheads, you know, early weekdays, if possible, weekend, just get there like first light to be, to be there, to beat everybody. Um, then you get into uh, like third week of October, you know, moving down in New England, moving down in elevation, um, you know, coastal Maine, mid coast Maine by then, not sure if like up in Acadia, you know, a lot of that area probably around there. So plan accordingly. I haven't quite figured out my plans yet, but might do something coastal, Always a good excuse to get back to Maine. Um, you get to end of October, you know, again, just keep following it down. Uh, the Cape is a cool spot then. Obviously not quite known for the foliage to the extent, you know, has some. Also just cool time to be there. You might be able to catch, you know, all through October, the cranberry bogs are being harvested. It's hard to know exactly when that happens. They kind of do them whenever they're ready. Um, but keep an eye out for that. I enjoyed seeing some of that last October, hoping to maybe get back again. Uh, early November, you know, you're talking maybe like out on the islands, never been at Nantucket or the vineyard for it. Um, but Boston, you get into early November, like Providence, spots of Connecticut as well. So it's kind of the general flow and of, of the average and what I'm kind of uh, planning on. So we'll see. Um, but for the first three weekends, I'm going to be in Vermont. So um, just to me, it's the most magical, quintessential fall New England vibes and I love the way even when it's busy I can find my way into some back roads and get away from the madness other areas it's just a little tougher to do that so depends what you want um, my vote goes to Vermont for these first few weeks so um, yeah so 
Thanks again for tuning in. This is episode 29, and uh, I'll be back next week to talk more about uh, the um, hopefully peak fall foliage in uh, Northeast Kingdom of Vermont and see where I end up making my way back on uh, that Monday. So thank you guys again, and I will see you next week.